Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. We're back in the shop where we love to be. Uh, had to get my car inspected this morning, early in the morning. I hate getting my car inspected. You know, we got to do that every year here in New York. And it's kind of like a scam, you know, when you go in there and they're looking over your car and it's like they're trying to drum up work, you know, they're like, ah, this looks a little big. <laughs> it's rough, you know, or that's why if you, if you have a good mechanic, Count your blessings because uh, they're like plumbers. They're pretty hard to find a good one. If, and if you do find one and they're good, they're so busy because they're good. Okay, so today we got a uh, an interesting tool that I don't think you've ever seen before. That's two in a row this week. This one's pretty rare. So let's you know, go check I it out. I don't usually go on eBay anymore because I, I I have enough tools to that I could start restoring a tool a day now and not be finished for the rest of my life. So... But what happened, I happened to be on there and, you know, me with pliers, I looked on here and I see this, these pliers and I said, okay, I'm going to bid. It was $8 shipping. So I said, you know what? I'll go as high as like $12. Anyway, I get this for $20 total. It was like 12 bucks bid, $8 shipping. So 20 bucks. And the reason I got this is because I have a lot of these pliers, but I saw this one there and I was like, what is that? I never saw that before. If I never saw it before, and then I look close, and thank God they had good pictures, and I see, wow, look at this. It's made in the USA. I said, I got to get it. I got. I never saw that before. So I get this. I got it delivered the other day, and there's some nice surprises in here. Some uh, good ply. Look at this. Uh, a nice Craftsman chrome vanadium. Can you see that? Craftsman vanadium. And the jaws are a really good shape. Nice handle embellishment. So that'll go nice with the uh, needle nose pliers we did. And then we have these mystery pliers, which look like, uh, you know, they look like they'll clean up pretty good. I don't know who made these. But anyway, we have a lot. But let's go check out this unusual. Okay, thing. these are called Click Plier. And they were made by Click Manufacturing Company in Fairbury. See that? Fairbury, Nebraska. Now, for those of you uh, not familiar, Nebraska is smack dab in the middle of the United States. I always wanted to go there. I haven't been out. One day I'm going to hit all the states in the Union. That's one of my goals in life. But um, Fairbury is located in the southern part of the uh, the state. And I, I had, of course, when I get a tool, I got to look up where it came from, what the deal was, especially if it's an unusual tool. Turns out this tool was patented in 1943 to 44. And... Um, it was made in, in Fairbury, Nebraska. Now, uh, the claim to fame for Fairbury, it was near a railroad. And uh, they to this day, they only have less than 4,000 people in that uh, in the whole city of Fairbury. And, you know, coming from where I live, we got 4,000 people, I think, live in that house three stories, three, three stories down. So, you know, it's, it's quite a, uh, a big difference. But... Um, What's unusual about this plier is when I, I got it and I, I was like looking at it, how it works, basically it's uh, you push this little lever down here, see, it disengages it and there's four little, you see those, I guess four little positions, these holes in here, and then you open it up to whatever position you want and, uh, and then you press it in from behind to lock into that position and it gives you a limited range of motion. The wrench is ridiculous it's not <laughs> it's it's not comfortable I, I don't understand how this competed with regular water pump plies i don't know but uh apparently they they made a few and then they uh the war because of the war on there was a shortage of materials and workers and they that was it there was only a few out there so i can i mean it's really a it's a strange wrench it's nothing comfortable about it so we'll try it out later um I don't know. Uh, what do you think? One thing I was looking at, I was like, what is this thing here? Couldn't figure out what that is, but I looked at the patent and I saw that that is a, uh, apparently it's a wire cutter of some sort. So I guess you would put a piece of wire in there and then that would squeeze it and cut the wire. So that was interesting. But um, the chromium plating was done. And this is a really good shape for considering I've only seen like three of these on the internet doing my research. Interesting wrench. You've never seen it before. Let's try it. Now, whenever you're dealing with a kind of wrench that has an adjustability factor to it, what you want to make sure is the closer the handles are, the more power you'll have in your grip. The wider they are, the less power you have because your fingers are extended. So you want to have it as close as you can. So you would adjust this. Here we have it uh, pretty much on the lowest one. And uh, you can see here, 
It doesn't have much of a range on this wrench, but you can see how you would grip it here like this. It, it does give you a good purchase on here, I must say. It is a strong purchase, but I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's nothing that uh, to write home about. Whereas, you know, you got all this uh, mechanism here that makes it difficult, especially, you, you know, you couldn't use it this way, obviously, because of the pin. So it's just a strange wrench, you know, and I guess that's why you don't see too many of these around, and I'm sure you've never seen one before. Um, so that's how it would work, I guess, you know, it's, like I said, it's, it's something that is not what you would call a, a wrench that is you know, a must have wrench. Let's check out if the wire cutter works for the uh, wire cutter. I always like to use a piece of wire hanger to, to, uh, I know what a good cutter will do on it. So you can see here how the jaw is. It looks like it's, uh, it's got a little bit of an angle to it. I don't know if it, uh, let's try it. We'll just take the, put it in here and squeeze down again we have it set for the wire cutter apparatus and it definitely is not an easy wire cutter it's kind of hard on the hand but uh anyway this is it the click plier click manufacturing company fairbury nebraska and uh over here are the manufacturer under the following patents so i'll have a copy of the patent on there just an interesting wrench because you'll never ever see one of these you probably never have never will and you'll see <laughs> i could see why you don't see these around anyway let's see what else we got now real quick before we get into our next item i want to just give a brief history uh it seems like over the last few years the big thing with ratchets what's putting different ratchets apart from another is the the gear tooth count in the head and what that means is how many teeth you can see here is an open tooth design that you could see this one here has uh, 30 teeth and you can see what it sounds like okay it's 30 tooth design uh, this one here a little bit later on this is a 40 42 tooth maybe listen to what it sounds like you could see that there's more clicks when you turn it obviously and this one here uh, this was a 72 tooth design and you listen to this one you see this much much finer i seen them go all the way up to 160 tooth and um that seems to be where things are going and i'll show you why this is uh important to have a uh, a high tooth okay, count now, years ago and for the things i use uh you don't need a small tooth ratchet because i i work on old stuff whatever like the old cars you'd never had a really need a tight odd uh, you never had tight spaces i mean you could practically sit in the engine compartment and work on the engine so you could see here that that was plenty you know here this is a 30 tooth ratchet and we can work it fine but in the newer cars things got real tight you know they're like that now and you could see i can't engage that nut anymore because uh it's the 30 teeth won't engage so we went to a uh, a higher gear no, tooth ratchet right. only has about 12 teeth more than the other one but notice with the same situation i'm able to operate that nut be and I'm only getting one click, but I'm able to do it anyway. Now, let's say these were closer together, then this would be out. And then we would go to the 72. Here's the 72, and you could see this one is clicking three times in that small space. So you could see I could actually have this needle, this nail over here, and it would engage. Because, uh, see that? It's still engaging because it, it has higher tooth count. And that's, what, that's why you would want these. Now they came out with something called the gearless head now, when i head. say now i don't mean recently it's, it's been around for it was the latest edition it might be 10 15 years old already but what it is it's a one-way bearing there's a bearing in here and it only allows it to there's no clicking it just allows it they call it a and you can see here it's called a, a gearless head uh ratchet you can see here i got this attractor supply obviously made in china but uh the reason i got it is because I wanted to uh, to try this out. And you could see there's no clicking whatsoever. It's, and it's supposed to have a very, like a one degree or two degree arc. But, you know, obviously this is Chinese made and uh, not of the highest quality. However, for $5.49, I thought it would be a fun tool to play with, okay? And if you notice on this end, there is a tapered like device at the end here. They tapered this down. And this is a lot of times when you have any kind of wrench like this, they call it a spud wrench. And a spud wrench, uh, this comes in very handy. A lot of times you have to align two holes for, in a piece of metal and you would place this in and you could align it 
to get a bolt or something now, like typically that. Typically what a spud wrench is used for, um, if you had two pieces of metal or wood or something that didn't line up, if you had two holes that you needed to put a pin or a bolt through and you couldn't get it through because the holes didn't exactly line up, you would take the end of the spud wrench, the pointy end, place it in here and you could massage it back and forth or whatever and, until you get them lined up to where you could get the, uh, the pin or the bolt and push it in that way. So that's basically what a spud wrench Now does. I thought this wrench would be a uh, fun, this ratchet would be a fun project because uh, first of all, I can't stand black finishes and especially this kind of finish. It feels like you're holding a piece of chalk in your hand. It's just absolutely not a comfortable wrench, you know, to, to hold because of the, the finishes. I hate parkerization. <laughs> so I want to see if I could do anything with this, this finish. Now, from reading the label on here and, and it coming from China, it said something about lead paint caution that uh, you could said lead compound. So you know this probably has lead paint on it. So the best thing to do is to treat, like I do all finishes, treat them as they're hazardous materials. No sense in trying to grind this off because uh, if there's lead in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some paint stripper to it and get everything, we off, or get everything off with the paint stripper. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this ratchet looked like before we started. And we're calling this wrench done. Uh, I did a little bit different this time. I did the candy green, you know, that uh, nice metallic green color. And on the other side, I did that orange I was telling you about, that candy orange. And, you know, you can see how it looks with the uh, the chrome. It always, I always like that color combination, but uh, the chrome and the orange. And obviously, you know, polished everything out here. Um, the head it's all polished out and you know it's just it's so much better isn't it than than the black i never liked that black and you could do this in any color this opening here is just gives you a wide array of different choices that you can put in there whether it be you know a, a metallic green or a, a candy orange or candy red which i'm sure some of you thought might go in there Anyway, uh, just something a little bit different with this wrench. Now, lastly, this is uh, the simplest of the uh, the gearless designs because this just has the one-way bearing in there. And when you pull the socket out, you know, for example, this would be uh, this would be tightening here, and if you want to loosen, you would just flip it around like this and switch it on this side, and then that would be loosened. So that's why you have the uh, the two sides in here. But other than that, it's uh, for $5, I, uh, I enjoyed doing this ranch. It was a lot of fun. Good practice. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you have a nice day and a nice weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.